How does artificial intelligence affect our daily lives on a macro scale? How does Moore's Law affect innovation, productivity, and our love of nice things? Here's a hint, it's a lot. AI, like other technologies, is extremely deflationary on long timescales. This deflation manifests itself as an increasing production per person. What causes this deflation and what does it cause? This increase in production decreases prices and it drives income higher. It raises our standard of living. We don't live nasty, brutish, and short lives anymore, in the words of Thomas Hobbes. There's never been a better time to be alive than today, thanks to technology, period. If you were to pick one time to be born and one place to be born, you would not pick 1720, you would not pick 1820, you would not pick 1920. You'd pick, to, you'd pick today and you would pick America. We likely wouldn't even live long enough to see 30 years if we were born in another era. That's crazy. All right, now very briefly, let's cover a historic example of a technology disruptor and improver providing productivity benefits because we can see its impacts over time through history. The prime example of this is agricultural revolution. Advances in machinery, fertilizers, farming techniques, now with AI, have enabled farmers to be much more productive. Farm production per labor hour increased nearly 16 fold since 1950, and the U.S. farmers have decreased to only about 1% of our population. That's awesome. Continuing the agriculture example, Farmer Joe now has advanced sensors, automated devices, intelligent machines, and information technology that inform him when to water, what types of fertilizer to use, ideal times to harvest, ways to financially hedge crop yields, how to weather adversity, and the ideal times and locations to sell his toils. As the consumer, you also benefit from his greater productivity by paying less at the supermarket. Or maybe you do what my wife does and you just buy more and better things. These productivity improvements are directly correlated to life satisfaction. The higher the productivity, the more satisfaction historically. People are objectively becoming happier. The more technology, the more satisfaction. All right, now let's talk some AI. Check out the growth in transistor density and computational efficiency. Gordon Moore observed a doubling in transistor density roughly every 18 months and predicted it to last another 10 years. Well, it's still going, baby. The bottom line here is that computers and artificial intelligence are growing exponentially. AI's effects, obviously, therefore, will be exponential as well. One of the interesting things about AI and robotics application is that easy things are difficult to automate and seemingly difficult things are typically easier. This sounds counterintuitive, but uh, for instance, we've seen a massive AI disruption in media, stock market, petrochemical engineering, legal services. These seem difficult, but it's uh, where AI is disrupted the earliest. It's very frustrating and difficult though to automate gardening and cooks and receptionists. I love my Roomba, but it's not Rosie from the Jetsons. My Roomba isn't even able to avoid my dog. I'm sorry, AJ. All right, let's talk numbers. How much has and will AI impact our economy and our lives? $15.7 trillion, according to PwC by 2030. This number is mind-blowing and is larger than the output of China and India combined. They also want to emphasize that the effects are not just impacting productivity, but our U.S. economy is more and more invested into services, which may be even growing faster from AI. How about another source? 13 trillion, according to McKinsey Global Institute. They predict the effects of AI will be on the order of electricity and the steam engine these general purpose technology revolutions. Here are seven areas McKinsey wants to highlight with associated boosts and drags on economic impact relative to today. If the bar is going up and to the right, this represents an additive impact of AI. If the bar goes down with a negative number, those are drags created by AI implementation, such as transition costs and competitive effects. 
Here's how AI will affect the different sectors. You can interpret this with dollar figures from impact, or you could also look at it of how much it's impacting the sector from a percentage basis. This chart does a good job expressing how the digitization of these sectors contribute to the efficiencies to be gained by AI implementation. As you can see, generally speaking, the higher the digitization that has already occurred, the higher the AI impacts likely to be. This makes sense. You're not going to see a significant percentage increase in a sector that doesn't even deal much with data. Finally, McKenzie drew direct correlations from these AI impacts to the countries that adopt and absorb the AI the fastest. As you can see, the incentives of the country to adopt AI quickly create a very compelling cumulative impact on the front runners. Conversely, the laggers actually see a decrease from AI, mainly due to the output loss due to competition. While the United States and China rank high on this list, others are strategically attempting to shift towards AI. I have a good video on who will likely be the world leader in AI, China or the US, uh, linked up above in 2030. Check it out, it's pretty interesting. Bottom line, China has grand ambitions after Lisa Dole's dethroning by DeepMind in the game of Go. It opened their eyes. They've lit a strategic fire under their efforts to improve their position, and they're fast nipping at our heels. Let's go, US. All right, what about employment? There's no force in economics that ensures human employment. Employers have and will continue to maximize profits which would employ either humans or machines or human machine teams, a combination. If you are in a job that is repetitive and dangerous, you may want to proactively look towards upskilling to a digital non-repetitive job in the next decade before your job is displaced. You may have given your Gen Z child some crap for focusing on their art and freelance work, but that creativity, that originality, that empathy are likely to see a future in an AI-enabled world more than perhaps a traditional blue-collar job that could be displaced. That metaphorical 19th century farmer that was expected to live till 30 years old is today employed in the service industry and should live past 75. Things will get even better than they are today due to the impacts of AI, but that doesn't mean that there won't be some challenges and difficulty along the way. Throughout history, innovation has replaced humans and even created new industries along the way. Think about the horse and buggy. This is a great example, I love this. The horse keepers and the buggy makers fought their noisy and dangerous counterparts and disruptors. In fact, in the 1860s, there was a series of acts regulating the use of the automobiles. They were effectively termed the red flag acts because they mandated that the car must travel no faster than two miles per hour in cities. And get this part, this is hilarious. Self-propelled vehicles should be accompanied by a crew of three, including a man walking 60 yards ahead with a red flag. Crazy. Lesson learned here, don't fight the innovation. Embrace it and prepare those with new skills that need it. The AI future is bright. This is Jerry. See ya!